good morning so today we are going to discuss another very important topic of transitional sediment environment or marginal marine environment and that is the tidal environment we are all familiar with the term tides that tides are rise and fall of sea water because of the gravitational attraction of the moon if this is the sea water then this sea water that rises and that falls because of the gravitational attraction of the sun and moon the alignment of sun moon and earth in the same straight line is known as sijgi and this sijgi is very very important when all the three important celestial bodies the sun earth and moon they are in the same straight line that situation is known as sijgi and this is responsible for the high tide and when they are vertical to each other that is responsible for the low tide the spring tide and the neap tide so if this is the main sea level then the rise and fall of sea water is known as tides so the area if this is the low water level and this is the high water level this is the high water level and this is the low water level then the area located towards land from the high water level this is first first is known as supra tidal the area located from high water level towards land the area between high water level and the low water level is known as second and this is intertidal and the area from low water level towards ocean this is third and this is known as subtidal so these are the important sub environments of the tidal environment towards land from the high water level is the supra tidal in between the high water level and the low water level is the intertidal and below the low water level is the sub tidal so any where tidal environments are dominant any coastal region any coastal region where the input of the terrigenous sediment from the river is is low means all those coastal regions if this is the coast where rivers are absent means delta formation is absent and where wave action is also absent the tides will dominate it means all those coastal regions which are not characterized by the presence of strong marine wave action and uh, fluvial action are the input of the terrigenous sediments by the river or the delta lar of set they are the region of tidal environment means they are the system of lagoon estuaries and uh, and the tides so tides are basically tidal flats are are the gently sloping terrigenous sediments which are located between the intertidal regions means between the high tide and the and the low tide so this is basically unvegetated sediments in the coastal region which are very broad that may be up to 25 km in 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 width that is known as tidal flat because they are very flat regions so generally the tidal currents they are very very dominant into the a uh, tidal environment region and how these tidal currents are formed if we just look at this this is the low water level and this is the high water level low water level and the high water level then the rise of water towards land means from movement of water from first to second that is known as flood tide and the return of water from second to first that is known as 
ebb tide. So the flood tide and ebb tide, they are very very important current, oceanic currents, and both these currents are known as the 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 ebb current and the and the flood current. They are known as bipolar current. They reverse their direction. First to second, the flood tide current, and the opposite is the second one that is the ebb tide current, and they are known as both these currents are known as bipolar currents. They are they flow are in in the opposite direction in the tidal flat region. So how the sediments in intertidal zones are generally located between the high tide and the low tide and they depend on the vertical rise of the water. So during tides the water also rises vertically. This is known as tidal range. If the rise of the water is up to 2 meter that is known as micro tidal 2 meter. If the rise of the water or tidal range is 2 to 4 meter then that is known as meso tidal and if less than 2 meter and if it is greater than 4 meter then this, this is known as macro tidal. In some of the regions, the tidal range is very very high that may be up to 15 meter or that may be up to 20 meter and that that region is very famous and that is Bay of Fundy in the Atlantic Ocean. We know that in the Bay of Fundy the water during tides that rises up to 10 meter, 15 meter or even in some cases up to 20 meter. So the Tidal range is maximum in the case of Bay of Fundy. And so depending on the tidal range, the tidal currents they are very very, their, their velocity is very very low in the micro tidal and the velocity is very very high into the macro tidal range. So the tidal currents, they are not uniform, their velocity or their effect increases and decreases according to the tidal range. The tidal flats are very very unique among all the sedimentary environments because generally in every sedimentary environment the process they operate over long period of time whereas in the case of tidal flat environment daily the direction of the current changes once it is from low water level to high water level and again on the same day it changes from high water level to low water level. So the change of direction of the tidal currents and the exposure of the sediments completely in the reverse direction on the daily cycle basis is very important feature of tidal currents. The, if you just look at the tidal currents or the tidal environment, if this is a if this is the low water level, high water level and this is the low water level, high water level and this is low water level. Then this region is characterized by the presence of sand. This region is characterized by the presence of mud. And this region is characterized by the presence of both the sand as well as mud. So in the lower tidal zone, the sand is very very dominant. In the upper tidal zone, mud is dominant. And in the intermediate zone, both sand and mud are dominant. So this is the complete picture of the presence of sediments into the uh, into the tidal environment or into the tidal flats region. The total width of the tidal flats I have already explained that this width may be up to 20 or 25 kilometer and generally the tidal flats they are within the intertidal zone 
means between the low water level and the high water level. So this, this is the region of sand and this is the region of mud. So as it means the tidal environment, they are characterized by finding upward sequences because at the base we are getting coarser sediment that is sand. In between we are, we are getting both sand as well as mud and at the top we are getting mud. So the tidal sequences or tidal environment, they are characterized by the finding upward sequences and the number of tidal channels they are they are formed and the tidal channels uh, tidal channels like this they are, they are formed into the into the tidal flat region which transport the uh, water and the, and the sediments so the supra tidal zone towards land from the high water level that is sub aerially exposed the subtidal zone means towards ocean from the low water level that is always aqueous that is always submerged and the mixed zone that is the intertidal zone located in low water level and high water level that exposes for submerged means that is both sub aerially as well as sub aqueous that exposes for some time and then again submerged and according to this the processes which are very very important into the tidal they are the flood tidal current, if tidal current means bipolar current, the wind driven waves and uh, they, they basically transport the sediment from this direction to that direction, from that direction to this direction, the tidal channels they also transport some sediments and on the basis of this the main sedimentary structures which are formed into the tidal flight environment are the tidal environment are number one is herringbone cross bedding or cross stratification. Second is mud traps. Third is lenticular bedding. Then fourth is flasher bedding. Then fifth is wavy bedding. Then sixth is reactivation surface. These are very important sedimentary structures and the last is that is the tidal bedding or tidal rhythmites or tidal bundle. These are important sedimentary structures. So how the herringbone cross bedding, the mud traps, the lenticular bedding, feather bedding, wavy bedding, reactivation surface and the tidal bundles they are formed. For certain that in this region the sand is present and because of the flood tidal currents once the four settler missions they are formed like this and after some time because of the ebb tidal current their direction reverses. So the formation of cross bedding in which the four set lamination they completely changes they reverse their direction is known as having bone cross bedding and this is very very typical characteristics of the tidal flight environment and they are formed in this region in the lower tidal flight region just above the lower tidal flight this is having bone cross bedding above this sand is dominant and mud is deficient. So this is the region where second where flasher beddings will be formed. Flasher means bedding means the sand is dominant and in the pocket of sand the clay lenses will be will be formed and the sand is, is dominant. This is flasher bedding. And in the case of further towards land the very bedding will be formed in which both are one, we are getting the lamination of sand, then mud, then sand, alternate sand and mud sequences, that is the very bedding. 
and again towards the land we get the lenticular bedding this is the situation of baby bedding and this is the situation location of lenticular bedding means lenticular fourth lenticular bedding means the clay is dominant and between the clay we are getting the lenses of the sand this is lenticular bedding further towards the land we get the bioturbation on the mud and uh, this region is characterized by the presence of scolithus scolithus are basically the pipe like structures they are the organic structures they are the uh, bioturbation structures so this region is characterized by scolithus again in between in this region we get the mud dye beads or mud drafts what are mud drafts the these are the mud drafts generally the crust of the ripple marks they consist of mud and if the cross bedding is formed by the migration of that ripple marks then the the crust that consists of mud this is known as mud drafts and the reactivation surfaces what happens that the ripple marks their crusts are formed and so the faucet laminations are formed like this this is one set of faucet laminations what happens that because of the another current because their direction is continuously changing one flood tide then ebb tide so because of the different direction of the tidal currents erosion takes place and the erosion may take place like this and then another set of cross bedding will be formed then further erosion on another direction takes place so the erosion of the force set laminations or erosion of the crust of the ripples on which another set of sediments are deposited by another direction of the current is known as reactivation surfaces so they are also very very prominent into the into the tidal region the reactivation surfaces and then the last and the very important and that is the tidal bundles or tidal rhythmites or tidal bedding if this is a four set laminations because of one current another set of current may be their energy may be different than the than that set so the four set laminations their thickness may vary in some their thickness is like this in some their thickness is like this again like this again like this again like this so the tidal bundles means the set of bedding or set of stratification in which the thickness of the four set lamination is continuously changing or uh, that is which is really basically attributed to the spring and neap tides so because of the spring and neap neap tides the thickness of the four set lamination of the cross bedding changes and that forms the tidal bundle or tidal rhythmites or tidal bedding so in not cell we can say that the tidal flat environments are the flat coastal region which gently dip which is unvegetated which may be up to 25 km thick where deltaic segments are absent where uh, oceanic waves are absent and the tidal ranges from micro tidal to meso tidal to macro tidal and the sub environments are supra tidal intertidal and the sub tidal and these are the important sedimentary structures so you please keep on revising and utilize this lockdown period to strengthen your sedimentology thank you and good wishes to all of you in next term we will come to the continental sedimenting